Radio and Nesquik, now's the time to shut off your Skype. You guys do not want to be the lead story of next week's hump day. Let's go to Andrea in Philadelphia. Andrea, how are you? Hello, Brad. Hi, Hi, Andrea. How are you I'm doing? Good, thank you. Thanks for waiting. I'm good, thank you. You're welcome. Um, first, I want to say you're doing a great job. Thank you. You're welcome. And I have two immigration questions. Um, the first question is, um, um, I was married before, and my green card is in my previous marriage name, and I got remarried. Okay. Um, is it possible I can use my green card in the first marriage and put the, my new marriage name now yeah. in my passport that I have? Absolutely. Could I travel with two different? Yes, you can. Okay, so put your, marri you. put your married name in your passport. But when you travel, you need to travel with, obviously, your green card and your former name, and also travel with your divorce decree and your marriage certificate if anybody questions, well, why does this green card have a different name than this um, passport? So if you travel oh. with the two documents which you would have to do to prove that whatever, I don't know, I don't know, maybe, maybe you're Bernstein and uh, you married Spar. So I used to be Spar, now I'm Bernstein. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? But you gotta okay. show, I divorced Spar and I married Bernstein or whatever, you, whatever your name is. Okay. You understand? Okay. Other, other than that, you would have to change the green card, but you can travel with those documents and you'd be fine. Okay, and thanks. And another question is, mm -hmm. um, Okay, I'm filing for my husband and on a green card, right. and I'm going to go for my citizenship. I was wondering, like, um, if I get the citizenship, would it be a shorter term for him, yes. and how long would it take? Where is he? Um, to, he's in Jamaica. Okay. Well, r file the I-130 right now. The quicker, the better. Yeah. Trump has a ban on immigration to the United States unless you are uh, married to a U.S. citizen or you're the child under 21 of a U.S. citizen. Uh, but nevertheless, that ban is going into the embassy to get your immigrant visa. It's not a ban on filing. It's not a ban on processing. It's not a ban on file now, get to the top of the list so I can get the appointment. So everybody should be filing. Uh, in a year from now or a year and a half from now, assuming you never become a citizen. Your husband would get a visa appointment, assuming the ban is over on lawful residence. If you become a citizen before that time, you would upgrade it. And regardless of ban or no ban, your husband would go through a few months later. Okay. So file now. Thank you. Regardless, yeah. uh, regardless of furloughs, regardless of USCIS running out of money, regardless of pandemics and bans, the best thing you can do is get in the system. Yes. And how long does it take to become a citizen? Uh, it depends on if immigration is open or not. You know, no, you, you never know. Me, what, you never, my, myself, myself. I know, I know but, you know, but in other words, you never know. Like, let's say you live in Philadelphia, I see. Or at least we believe you live in Philadelphia. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know. Let's say immigration's open. The immigration service is open in Philadelphia today, and next month, uh, coronavirus goes crazy through Philadelphia. I hope it doesn't. And then oh they my, and then they close oh down. God. And then they close down immigration. Then you're backed up again. So what happens? Yeah. They furlough two thirds of the immigration officers. Furlough means go home. We're not paying you. How fast are these one third of the immigration officers going to process the cases? How long are these people going to be furloughed? I don't have the slightest idea. Within all I can tell you, normal times, assuming immigration remains open because of COVID, assuming if there is a furlough, it is of a very, very short period of time. You got to figure six, nine months to become a citizen. But this okay. is not normal times. So the only thing I can tell right, you, right. And, and anyone who says, yes, six, nine months, 10 months, then you have no idea right now. It is absolutely a guess, exactly. okay? The only thing I can tell you for certain, if you don't file, it's never happening. So file. Yes, okay. Thank you so You're much, very welcome. Brad. All right, best of luck. Bye-bye. Okay. Let's go to David in Baltimore, Maryland, David. Hello, Brad. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Very well, thank you. What? I, What's going you're on? Doing a good job. Thank I you. like the energy in thank the you. studio. Thank you. Yeah, um, I'm a nurse from 
Nigeria. Okay, great. I came into the U.S. Um, December 2018. Mm -hmm. How'd you come And um, to actually, you know, take my exam, but I didn't pass it. Um, now, as you speak, I'm out of status. I just want to know what my chances are to be able to legalize my papers if I have um, an option. As a nurse? Well, I mean, it depends. Because well, what, 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 what visa did you come here on? B1, B2. Okay. So you've overstayed your time. Do you have any family here? No, they are back home. Mm. Okay. And how long have you overstayed your time? Well, uh, my six months um, the last, um, last year, my when? visa will expire in November this year. When did your six months lapse? Um, I should be, I think, June or July of 2016, last year. 2019, you mean? Should I again? 2019. Yes, last okay. year. Okay. All right. So, a couple things. Okay. If you want me to jump all the way, let me jump all the way to the end. I mean, you know, short of you, you know, sounds like to me, short of you marrying an American citizen, at this moment, you know, in a bona fide loving marriage where you live together, have a financial relationship together, short of that happening, it doesn't look like you would get a green card for multiple reasons. Okay. Number one, you told me Nigeria. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you say Nigeria, there is at this moment a ban on Nigerians. The ban is immigrant visas, green cards coming out of Nigeria to the United States. There's no ban for a Nigerian adjusting their status in America. It's immigrants in Nigeria coming. So you could always get married in a bona fide loving marriage as a Nigerian and get your green card here. Uh, but then mm -hmm. you had told me, you had told me you're a nurse. One of the yes. exceptions, one of the exceptions to the Nigerian ban are people who are essential workers working as a nurse. You're, you're an essential worker. Uh, you would be an essential worker as a registered nurse. Now, to yes. get sponsored as a registered nurse, you would need a nursing home or a doctor's office or, a, or a, a hospital to sponsor you as an RN, and you would need to have the appropriate licensing, which would be... You would have to pass the NCLEX. You would have to pass the TOEFL, the test of English as a foreign language, submit yes. it to uh, the CGFNS organization. There's actually a website, cgfns.org, and it's the Commission mm -hmm. of Graduate Foreign Nursing Schools. They yeah. give you a certificate saying you have the appropriate credentials to work legally in America as a nurse. And then you can do your sponsorship. And because you're a Nigerian, uh, that's not part of the ban. You would be able to get a green card, except you can't adjust your status here because you've already overstayed your time. And if you go home, even though you're not part of the ban, you're an essential worker, because you've overstayed your time by more than a year, you have a 10-year bar, and there's no waiver for that. Mm -hmm. So we're back to get married in a bona fide loving marriage. You, you gotta for Don't do a business marriage. Don't get married just to get a green card because A, that's illegal, B, you're most likely not to get through and you'll screw yourself up and end up in deportation. But assuming you fall in love and this is a real bona fide marriage, that would be the way to go. Okay, so um, even if I pass the NCLEX, um, correct, to get to an right, right, it, correct, it and, and, and just, correct. So just watch, you can rewatch this after we're done. Uh, so I gave the explanation why even if you pass the NCLEX, the TOEFL, get the CGFNS, it's not going to work for you. Mm -hmm. All right. So the Thank only you. way it would work is if you had parents here, which you don't have, to do a provisional mm -hmm. waiver, which you don't have. Right. Right. Thank you so right. much. Thank you. Okay. I really appreciate it. All right. Good luck. Thank you. All right. All right. Let's go to Esther in New Orleans. Esther. Hey. How right. are you? How are you doing? I'm, I'm good. And you? Good, good. What's going on? Well, I have a couple of questions, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm a little bit mess, which is, um, well, I know, you know my lawyer is taking care of it, but I, I just need some questions from you. Okay. Um, my I-130 was denied, mm -hmm. and um, they withdrew my work permit from me. Why was your I-130 so, denied? Uh, because uh, when I was coming to the United States of America, I told him in the embassy that uh, 
I was married. Ah. Which I was not, yeah. Where are you from, Esther? Like, Where are you from? I'm from Nigeria. Okay. So, for those who are saying, well, why would Esther say she's married when she's not? To get a visitor's mm -hmm. visa, you got to show you have ties to Nigeria that you're coming to visit and you're going home. So one of the ways you can show ties is you have a spouse back home you're leaving behind. So whether you knowingly did it or not, a lot of times the travel agents just say you're married and you don't even realize you're doing it. But, um, you know, you, you lied to the government and they caught you. Yeah. Right? That's, yeah, that's what mm -hmm. my lawyer was. Right. Um, he was, he really asked me that, did I really marry the Nigeria? I said, no, I just got a baby daddy, right. which I got two kids uh, in Africa, in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I got, I fall in love with another man here. I got married. We got a child together. We got a, a, a one child Great. together. So I have an answer for the, you, but you can tell me your whole story. I have the answer for you. Yeah. You so, me. so um, the the what, what my lawyer was saying that do I have any documents in in, in Nigeria that can say I'm a single? I did never married before. You know, on a, a legal lawyer back in Nigeria. No, no, it's not so going to be. No, 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 no. It's not going to be a lawyer in Nigeria to say you're single. Yeah, like like a, like a high make, cost. Yeah, like the, a high cost. No, there 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 has to be, and I don't know who to go to. Okay, like for example, in Jamaica, there's something called the National Record Center. Yes, in Nigeria, it's a high court, but you have to yeah. go to every jurisdiction in Nigeria, not yeah. just the high court in your neighborhood or your state or your city. Yeah, or, that, that, okay, that, that, you got you got to they got to they you got to get something that is recognized by the United States of America. I don't know if it's from the high court or not. I can find out, and I'll tell you how to find out in a second. Your lawyer should also know how to find out, all right? Because I don't know every agency in every country around the world. Sometimes you got to look it up. But okay. you have to go to that particular agency in that particular country. Your country is Nigeria. Have mm -hmm. them do a search in every jurisdiction in, mm -hmm. in Nigeria have a certified letter from that agency saying they did a search from every jurisdiction that mm -hmm. there is no marriage of Esther to anybody in Nigeria. Now, what does that do? That certifies to the U.S. government that your current marriage, who you're in love with, is a legal marriage. You're not a bigamist. And two, uh, and two, um, you know, this is this is a bona fide marriage. Well, it's the same thing. I guess it's, you're not a bigamist. But what happens now is when you say that, you now have to admit, yes, I lied. I, I lied because I said I was I was married when I wasn't. And then you file a waiver. Now, how do you find and your lawyer should know this. There's something called the uh, Foreign Affairs Manual. OK, and you can Google this yourself. You don't need to be a genius to do this. You go okay. to Google. OK, and you can Google this right now and in about 60 seconds, find out your answer. You Google right. foreign affairs manual. OK, uh, availability of marriage certificates, Nigeria. OK, OK. okay. And then uh -huh. in the foreign affairs manual, which is given by the State Department, they will tell you what the State Department what, which is what also the Department of Homeland Security will recognize. What document will they recognize from what agency in Nigeria a marriage certificate? And then you go to that same agency and say, I don't want a marriage certificate. I want something certifying, certified saying there is no marriage certificate. Yeah. And that's what you submit to immigration. Yeah, OK. Um yeah, like my, you know, I'm here and uh, my cousin did that for me, which they, they did that, and mm -hmm. it was got to the to the judge, stamp the, uh, everything, but we submit everything now, but we submit everything since February, like what you say, we did everything, we submitted this on February this year, uh, but we never hear anything from them, I think maybe because of the coronavirus, when I called my lawyer, he was saying you never hear anything from them too. Well, so, well two things, one is, um, I don't know what you submitted. So whether you did it right or not, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Two, yes, it could be coronavirus. Three, are you in deportation or this is with USCIS? No, I'm not. They, they didn't send me no deportation. All right, so this is because you, you said judge. So you, you sent it to the immigration officer. Yeah, it could be because of corona. Also, you know, with every Nigerian certificate, 
and this goes mm -hmm. for all Nigerians. This is what I've noticed lately. Immigration does background checks on every Nigerian certificate that's submitted. They take over a okay. year to investigate every Nigerian certificate, and then they're going to wow. come back to you and tell you whether or not they believe this is authentic. I don't know what you wow. submitted, though. Yeah, like, yeah, okay, but I'll still go check what you said, but Correct. like that is what. Correct. Um, what was but I'm still going to Google what you said Correct. to check what I submit. Correct. Like you said, I right. really appreciate that. But I want, I have made another question. What? The question is that um, my children back home is sorry, I'm really, really bothered about them and um, because the way they are treating and everything like that. So um, I was thinking, like, what well, my own case is like this. Can my husband file for them? No. I mean, no. you can't you can file for them, but they're not going to get their green cards until you verify that uh, your marriage okay. is legal. Legal. Okay. Well, how old are your children? Um, twelve and ten. Okay, you, this is what I would do. Assuming you got the right documents, file okay. the I one thirty because it's going to take a year anyway. All right, okay. and, and then hopefully, okay. hopefully, hopefully, you submitted the right documents to prove your marriage is legal. Okay, so All when right. I submit the documents you're talking about. I should file the I-130? File. Let oh, you, I, th this is my answer. File. Okay. Let your husband file I-130s for the two kids, okay? And see what immigration says. Start the case, because it's going to take a while anyway. And if you need help, hold okay. on, okay? All right. Thank All right. you. All right. Let's go to Andre in Fort Lauderdale. Andre. Hey, Brad. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. So um, I have two kids uh, who are from Jamaica. They're actually, they came up to visit me. Um, They've been here since July. Um, I One is 13, one is 10. Um, I was married to the mom. However, uh, the first child, which is 13, was was out, was with, was before the marriage. Right. So what I want to know, um, also, I'm in the military. Um, I put my application in for naturalization. I did my fingerprints. I'm just waiting for, I guess, an interview date, mm -hmm. if that's going to happen anytime soon. Right. What I want to know, um, I'm planning on putting in a application for the kids. Right. The I-130 and I-148. Mm -hmm. Am I, is it safe to do that? Are are the kids, did they overstay their time yet? Uh, well, no, they came in July, so. They came in July, okay. So you're gonna do it, when in July? The the 2nd of July. Uh, August, September, you're gonna do it October October 3rd. Wait 90 days okay. and then do it. Okay, and, and then you, when, when I do Whether it, you're a citizen or not, you're gonna do it. Okay. Um, okay. So, it, and, and then so so what's going to happen is this: you may or may not be a citizen October third. We have no idea. Okay. If you're a citizen, you're going to file the adjustment application for the children. They're going to become automatic U.S. citizens when they get approved for their adjustment. If you are a resident, you're going to file uh, based on being a resident on October 3rd or after, your kids will get green cards. And then the day you become a citizen, the day will, they will become automatic U.S. citizens. So let me ask you a question. How long will, do you have an idea of how long typically, I know it's, it's a normal situation. It's a not a normal situation. The circumstances situation. are not normal. Uh, well, well, like I don't know from military because I've never actually done a military naturalization. Why? Because nobody would ever come to me to do it. The military does it for you for free. Uh, right. So I don't know how long military naturalizations take. I can tell you how long civilians ones take without COVID. Well, and it's no, about not six, for the naturalization, months. for, for oh. the for the processing oh, for, of oh, the Oh, for case. the adjustment? It should be about yes. six to nine months, too, depending on your jurisdiction, depending on if immigration is open or not, depending on COVID, depending on furloughs. You know, that we don't know. But in normal times, it's six to nine months. If I do, if I do an, an advance parole with the application and it gets approved, if it's, is it safe for them to travel? For very short periods of time. Okay. Not, All right. not, Thank to, you go, very not much. to go back to school in Jamaica. Right. No, I'm right. going to, they're, they're going to, they're going to, okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, you very understand? much. Okay. All right. Let's go to Abraham in Brooklyn or Abraham in Brooklyn. Excuse me. Abraham. Hello? Abraham. Hello, hi, boy. Hi, how are, how are you? you? Good. I'm good, I'm good. How are you? I'm just calling uh, about my friend's situation. They family, and he's left the United States on December last year, and he's a green card holder. 
green card holder, and then he's asking me, like, uh, green card holder in the pandemic situation, they have to back to the country, like, uh, every six months, or they can stay longer. They, they have to, even in pandemic situations, they got to come back every six months. Every six months. So yep. If they have to come back, so at least how long they should stay? They have the to be States. permanently living in the United States. So oh, okay. permanently living means more here than somewhere else. Okay. So next, my next question is, so uh, if I'm getting the, my green card, I'm in the United States by Wava case, and after getting the green card, after how long can I apply for the passport? Three years. Three years. Okay. Thank you so much, right. Brian. I okay. appreciate that. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. Where are we going? Let's go to... Blessing in Dallas. I think I've talked to Blessing before, right? Blessing. Yeah. Hey, Brad. Hey, how are you? Yeah, Brad, good to have you back. It's Thank been you. a while now. Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so uh, sorry, I did call some time ago to ask about, uh, to try to get some information from you, so get yeah, some help from you about mm -hmm. kids, that, my kids that are in Nigeria that I'm trying to file, file I-34. Mm -hmm. But then, I'm a, I'm a permanent, I'm a green card holder, the two years green card, so uh, I'm not sure what I'm missing uh, among the documents, but I don't know if I have to add a tax return or divorce certificate from a previous uh, marriage. For the I-130? Yes, sir. You don't need anything for taxes for the I-130. If you have a green card, two-year green card, all you got to do is prove these are your children, so your name is on their birth certificates. And if you were never married yeah. to the mother of the children, you would need... You would I need were you married to the mother of the children? At that time, we got divorced. We got divorced. Yeah. Okay, then you don't need to prove bona fide relationship. You just need to show your green card, the children's birth certificates, showing your name is the father, show the marriage yes, certificate sir. to the mother, uh, and your divorce decree, and that's all you need to file with a copy of your green card. Your, your tax mm -hmm. returns and everything else will be done at the end of the case. Yeah, but uh, as, as a matter of fact, what we did at that time was customary marriage not a it's fine not a, okay well if it's just a customary marriage and not a legal civil marriage then in addition yeah. you would have to show that you have a relationship with the children meaning that you support mm -hmm. them you have pictures with them you spend time with them etc okay all right all right thank you sir appreciate it. thank you okay mm -hmm. let's go to kanish in atlanta am i getting that right or kanish can't be kanish kanish Kanish, 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 K E N E I S H in Atlanta, Georgia. Yes, Mr. Brad, K. I'm right here. Miss K. Miss K. Right here, Brad. How are you? Kanisha, Kanisha Book. Kanisha. Ah, they told me can, they, they have it spelled wrong. It's Kanisha Book. Kanisha. You hear me, Kanisha. Julian, the TriCaster guy. Take, there you go. We ch we changed you from Kanish to Kanisha. We got it now. What's going on? Hi, hi, Brad. Good. How you doing? Yeah. Um, thank you for the good job that you're doing. I thank you. I continue to do it. Two questions for you, Brad. Yes. How long does it take to get a, a self-petition um, receipt? For a VAWA? Yeah. About four or six weeks these days. Okay, another question. Um, a friend of my, a man, she's going through some difficulty. Um, she has been into an abusive relationship for a couple months. Well, well, well I'm sure it's story is short. Mm -hmm. um, she and her abuser went to the court where the abuser get um, um, one year restraining order to stay away from she and the kids. Right. Anyhow, she went away and she filed the, the, the self-petition. The self-petition. And then soon later, she heard that uh, because she already got her work permit, but she was waiting on the interview. But the police had to move her from the abuser um, address and they put her to a secret place. All right, the question is though, um, we heard that the abuser um, got the notification to go on the interview. 
For um, the abuse case? No, not the abuse for the, for the case. Adjustment case um, for the adjustment case, for the adjustment. Yeah, for the okay. adjustment. Is there, yeah. is there an order of protection? Yeah, there's an order of protection, but she does not have that paper. He's the abuser. They sent it to that address. Because since later when she found out, she has to change the address. Okay, so, so we have to contact immigration. Get her. does she know what day she's supposed to go? She knows nothing. She just knows there was something mailed. Um, out. I think I think someone give her a head up to what's going on. So okay. I think she know she knows about the interview date right. because someone overheard. So yeah, someone needs to go with her. Someone needs to get a copy of the order of protection and go with her on that interview. Someone needs to hopefully go to immigration. Um, and make an, you make an appointment to go get a duplicate copy of that notice. Make sure immigration doesn't notify uh, the abusing husband of any more uh, appointments. And if that husband shows up, you tell an immigration officer, I have a, uh, I have a uh, order of protection, and that guy's going to get arrested. Okay. Thank you so All much, right. Brad. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you again. You're welcome. Okay. All right, let's go to Stephen in Houston. Stephen. Hi, Brad. How you doing? Good. Uh, my name is Stephen. I'm calling from Houston. Okay. Um, Brad, 2016, I got married to an American citizen. 2017, I got my green card. Right. 2019, I filed for I-750. Got it. To remove the conditional permanence. 40 days after... I was arrested because my wife was having a fight at a party. We saw a lady which she was drunk, and I was forcing her to into the castle that we can leave. So someone called the cop that we had a fight. I think mistakenly she hit her face somewhere. You had you had a fight that. with a lady, or you had a fight with your wife? I had a fight with my wife. We, okay. we had she, she had a fight with a lady. And then you got into a so, fight. Who did you get into a fight with? Your wife was fighting a lady. Who did you fight with? Yeah, I was nobody. I was forcing her into the car. You so were tossing we your leave. wife into the car. You were ripping her away from the fight. Yeah, I was so, taking yeah, her away from the you, fight. Okay, so your wife is, you know, whatever she's doing, and you grab her and you say, come on, we're out of here, and you th yeah, throw her in the car like that. Car. Okay. And yeah, then so, somebody says... You're abusing your wife and called the cops. That's your story. Yes. Is that your story? We do. Yes. Okay. And and you yeah, got arrested. Did you get arrested for domestic violence? Yes, sir. And what happened with the case? So the next morning I got a free bond. So I got a criminal attorney. Then what happened with the case? Were you found guilty of anything? No, I pleaded not guilty. Now the district attorney told my. Um, uh, Anthony, that she just want me to go for anger management and come back with the certificate so that she can dismiss the case. Okay, but I so, think I never so, did so what you have, right, as long as you don't plead guilty and you have to ask your criminal defense attorney, is this considered a pre-trial diversion? That's the term you need. A pre-trial pre diversion, three words. Is this a pre-trial diversion? If it is a pre-trial diversion, it is not considered a guilty plea for immigration purposes, okay? okay? Now, in Texas, I've seen a lot of cases in Texas where somebody pleads guilty, they're sentenced, and then the judge says, after you, your sentence is, go do anger management, when you come back, we'll wipe the case away, that's a guilty plea, because you pled guilty and a sentence was imposed. Pre-trial diversion means you never pled guilty to anything. They just give you a sentence. Go do anger management, but you never said you were guilty. And then you come back, yeah. you come back, you have, I did my anger management, and then they dismiss the charges. That's not a guilty plea. So, so oh. the, the second thing I described is something called pre-trial diversion. The first thing I described is an expungement, and that's, an, that's a conviction. So just make sure your pre-trial diversion. Now, I'm not taking sides because maybe your wife will call next and say, Stephen's a dirty dog and he abuses me. I have no idea. I don't know what happened. Okay. My wife wrote a letter to this. Okay. Text, I hope not. I hope not. I hope not. But what I will say is this. 
because you got arrested in a domestic violence with your wife, that is actually evidence of a bona fide marriage. Because people who pay each other to get married in business relationships don't get into domestic violence of, uh, uh, in the middle of the night. So yeah. you actually could use that on your I-751, presuming you're, it's a pretrial diversion. Okay. All right? Okay, so uh, can I, my, one more question. Can I travel after I get the case? Yes, business? yes. I can travel after that. Yes. All right, thank you. You're welcome. All right, let's go to Nav in San Francisco. Nav. Hi, Brad. Hey, how are you? I am doing good, Brad. Uh, Brad, I have I filed for an employment-based green card uh, in 2018. Last year, I got uh, interviewed, uh, and the case was transferred to TSC slash NBC Center post-interview because the visa dates were not current. Uh, so today's bulletin for September, my visa dates got current. Um, so I actually have a um, EAD and advanced payroll up for renewal. Right. So do you think I should still apply for the yeah, renewal? Cause, yeah, because you, 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 you never know when you're going to get the green card. So yes, do it. Okay. And then the other question is on the, um, I've been, you know, I've been getting this, I've been reading that, you know, on the EAD advanced parole form, you have now have to fill up each field, whether it's applicable or not. And you just write not applicable. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that the requirement? Yeah, like, yeah. you know, some of the fields, which yeah. says, you know, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't hurt to say not applicable. It's perfectly fine. So is it all the fields where, which is not even applicable, like the other names I've never used? So yeah, just write, I write just write not applicable. Yeah, yeah, always better be safe than sorry. I never heard that okay. before. I haven't seen anything returned because nobody wrote not applicable. But it doesn't hurt to say not applicable. It doesn't hurt. Yeah, but, yeah because when I'm filling out this form online, right. there are a lot of fields, if you don't select yes, it doesn't let you fill the next field. So I can't write not applicable online. So I, and I don't want to write manually. So I would... So then, so, then, so then just so then either if you can write it, write it. If you can't submit it without it. I've never seen I've never seen anything returned that said because you didn't fill out every, you know, uh, um, every line that doesn't apply to you, you know, um, that that you'd be denied. So I, I, I never saw that before. But if you're concerned about it, then do it. It doesn't hurt. Okay. No, no, no. I was just checking. Mm -hmm. The other right. thing is, since the date got current, how long is the uh, wait time before I can, you know, raise a SR in, or in, inquire? In, in, um, in normal times, I would say 60 days, maybe here 90 days. Okay. All right. Okay. So I got to wait for 90 days before even yeah. I can inquire. I mean, you can, I mean, you can inquire status. tomorrow if you want. I'm just saying for it to be a worthwhile inquiry, I'd wait 90 days. Okay. All right. Okay. And since the interview was done last year and this was transferred back, I'm assuming, you know, because the the, uh, the interview officer said he doesn't need any more paper. Well, the the, yeah, you, you, would, you, would, you would assume that he's being honest with you. And then as soon as the date's current, they'll mail you a green card. So you should assume that. Yes. I mean, it's been over a year. Yes. They never came back and asked yes. anything. So I'm sure that's yes. been transferred. The only thing they may ask okay. for is is an is a updated job letter. It's possible they will do that. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Right. And, and maybe the medical, right? right. I mean, medical no, 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 the medical, valid, the medical so. is valid. The, the only thing, they may ask for an updated job letter, though. Okay. okay. All right. All right. And so, which means the transferring of case to TSC or NBC is, is considered more likely, uh, you know, it's, it's approved. It's just they were waiting for the priority date to become No, I, th I just transferring the case means they want to get the file out of the local office because they didn't have room to hold it. Uh, but that doesn't okay. that doesn't mean anything more than that. Okay, but he didn't tell us anything during the interview, whether it's approved or not, but he said he's good, he doesn't need anything, and he's transferring because the dates are not... It, all, it obviously only... sounds positive, but I wasn't there, so I can't, I don't know, but I haven't seen your application, but it sounds positive to me. Okay, okay, got it, got all it. Right. Okay, all right, perfect, thanks a all lot. Right. Good thanks luck. For your help. All right, let's go to Stefan in Kansas. Stefan. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Man, 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 everything is going on, Oi, man. I uh -oh. just want to, I don't have any questions. Yeah. I don't have anything. I just want to say thank you for everything. Like, oh. I called the other day, but you oh. guys were the home. Right. You guys shut down and everything. Right. So I got a, I got my green card approved. Oh, congratulations. Um, uh, August the 6th. Congratulations. And, oh, thank you so much. Like, it's because of you, man. Why? I what remember I, I was standing, 
I was spending so much time just watching everything online. And my uh -huh. wife was like, what are you doing online watching Bradshaw and everything? I said, you don't understand. You don't, you don't get it. Um, and at some point she was like, oh, you need to be an attorney now. I was like, uh, uh you don't get it. <laughs> So now when we got approved, it's right. like, you need to call me. You need to call oh, me thank back. Thank you. Well, so. congratulations. You know, you, you oh, tell okay. your wife now, you know what I was doing? I was saving thousands and thousands of dollars from hiring a local lawyer. And <laughs> I'm saving you. <laughs> exactly. two, two, and I'm saving you two years of sleepless exactly. nights when I get denied. <laughs> Everything went perfect. Hey, to be honest with you, you are you are my attorney, like, on virtually. Because yes. I was watching all the videos. I was watching everything. And you and Yo Yo, I mean, like, the cool. You. you guys, just, yeah, you guys, I, amazing. I so. was actually. It, what's amazing is I didn't even know I was your attorney. It was all through osmosis. I had no idea. So uh, uh, I congratulations. Became, I became. I actually became an attorney just watching your videos. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. <laughs> all right. Well, congratulations. It's great news, and uh, please hey, spread the word. I appreciate your call. Hey, thank you. Thank you have you. a good all one. Right, you too. All right. Let's go to Keisha in Baltimore. Keisha. Hi, Brad. How you doing? I'm fine, thank you. And squad up to the team. Thank you. What's going on? I have a question for you. Two questions, rather. If you marry to an American citizen, right, and you're putting in your paperwork, how long does it take for you to get permit? I don't know. You know, as I as I said before, you know, six nine months in old times, these times are crazy times. You know, I don't know the answer to that. Or can you, um, at the same time, your husband is filing for you to get your green card. Is it possible where you can put your children that is under age on it at the same time? You're supposed to name your children on the application, but if your husband, you want your children to get a green card, your husband has to file separate applications for each child. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Best of luck. Let's go to Jim in Worcester, Massachusetts. Jim. Jim, how are you? Worcester. Worcester. Good, 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 good. It's in good. Worcester, Massachusetts. Yes. <laughs> it's spelled hey, Worcester, man. but pronounced yeah. Worcester. What's going on? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh good. Oh, first of all, I want to thank you for everything for uh, for the advice you are giving right. us. My pleasure. You know, he's saving, he's saving us a lot of money, mm -hmm. you know. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, my, my, my first question is, I have a friend, you know, I am a, yeah, I am an advocate for a African community here, mm -hmm. and I'm helping a lot of, a, a lot of um, people who need help. I, I always help them, you know. And my first question is, I have a friend who is a citizen, and he applied for for his fiancée. He get everything. Now, now because of the COVID-19, the, the, the case stuck in a, a visa center here. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, but now the, uh, the fiance is getting she's getting sick now, she's getting sick in Africa. It's, it's not any any way we can speed up uh, uh, that case. Who's sick in Africa? The person waiting for the green card. The, the fiance. The fiance. What, what is she? Yeah, what is she? Fiance, what is, what's wrong with her? What, what's wrong with her? Oh no! It's, no, it's, it's, like, it's uh, almost uh, almost two years now. Uh, the, the guy. Uh, he didn't go back there and uh, to visit the guy, you know, and, uh, you know, it, 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 uh, uh, well, it's going to be a problem uh, if he never went for two years to go visit her, because they're going to say, what kind of marriage is this? You haven't seen your wife in two years. No, it's a wife. It's a, it's a fiance. A fiance. It's, because, uh, it's even, it's even worse. Father. Even worse. You haven't seen your fiance in two years. Okay. If I was engaged to somebody who lived in another country and I didn't see them for two years, I, I would I'd be jumping out the window. Yeah, that's what that's what's gonna happen. Now, but we we don't we we don't want that to happen because right. uh, uh, the fiance now she's like a, a angry, depressed. You know, she 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 just, she just wants to walk away. But I don't know if uh, it's not any way we can we can push. Uh, it's, it's any way we can push uh, that uh, that uh, case. But what? Why? Mm. Why is it two years and it hasn't been approved? A K one visa should no, take no, no, six it's months. Not, it's not like a two years. No, he started the case now. It's like almost. A six month now. He started the oh, the, the case. Oh yeah. Okay. So yeah. So it should get approved within the next few months. It's about nine, ten months for a fiance. My bigger concern for them is when she goes to the embassy, and the yeah. embassy says, "When's the last time you saw your fiance?" And she said, "Here, February 2018. I got a picture." 
And, uh, and the embassy says, well, you have any more recent pictures than February 2018? She says, no, haven't seen them in two years. They're going to say, BS on the marriage, this is denied. So yep. she's waiting at this point, after not seeing her fiancé for two years, to be denied. So they, they, they need, you know, they don't need an immigration lawyer. They either need a reality TV series or a psychiatrist to get them together. Yep, yeah, yeah. Okay. All okay, right. Okay, okay. Yeah. And the, my, my, next, my next question is, uh, I have another friend. You know, he's a, he, uh, he, have a, he have a two kids with his girlfriend. Right. They are from, Af uh, from Africa. But the, 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 the woman, she's very, uh, well, the, the guy is a citizen. But the lady, she's a, a, a green card holder. And the, she, the, the, uh, uh, the woman, she's very abusive. Uh, to him, you know, but no, 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 and even uh, the woman give him uh, stay away, pe personally stay away, you know, do not come to see his, his children, but uh, almost like a two two month now, but he want he want to go to the court, or uh, but he want he want advice, but you know he doesn't know what to do, but how, how, how can we, how can we solve that? He's not seeing his children. That's basically it. Yes, the, the woman tells him to not come to his place. To it's come, it's to his to children? His it's his children? Yes. yes. Where does he live? Where does he live? We, we, we live in the, in the same town here, in okay. Worcester. Here. And, and, the, and where's the children? It, it, with, the, with the woman. Where, with, with the, in the Worcester in, also. In so he needs to go into the local family court. It has nothing to do with immigration. He can be out of status. He can be a citizen. He can be a green card holder. Pending green card. Doesn't matter. In the United States of America, you have the right to see your children. Unless you're going to, you know, you're abusing the children, then the judge will say stay away. Short of that, you have a right to see your children. And the children have a right to see you, because that's in the best interest of the children to see their father. I've never seen, unless there's an abuse going on, where it's not in the best interest of a child to see their father. So he yep. needs to go to family court, whether she likes it or not, and apply for visitation custody apply for something but that's an immigration okay. that's not an immigration issue i got to get to the other calls but i really appreciate you you calling okay okay thank, thank you. you thank okay. you Ray. all right let's go to o ola in oakland california ola hi sir mr brown how you doing good how are you i'm fine i want to say thank you thank you for what you've been doing so far my pleasure uh, i really appreciate you out there and you're so cool uh i have a question Go ahead. My question is, uh, uh, I got married 2014, and I got my first green card 2015. Right. Uh, after that, um, I filed for my 10 years for green card, which I got it like last year, October. And now my, me and my wife are kind of shake a little bit, and I'm looking for opportunity. Maybe I can file for my citizenship by myself without my wife. All right, so you and your wife are having problems now. When did you get your conditional green card? I got it 2016, December. December or, or September? Yeah. December. December. Okay. Yeah. Um, what day in December? Uh, I think December 12th. Okay. So uh, October, on September 15th, you can file your citizenship on your own. September 15th? Yes, 90 days before the five-year anniversary. Oh, I was thinking it was October. All right, October 1st. But if you told me December 12th, I just did the math in my head. September 15th is 90 days before. Oh, okay. All right? Okay. But you want to do it October? Yes. You can do it October. It doesn't matter. Any day I'm after September 15th. Oh, okay. That's you. So um, I can do it all by myself without my wife. You can... What? Yes. When you say all by yourself, what that means is... You can go on your citizenship interview and you do not have to worry about proving whether or not you live with your wife at that moment in a bona fide marriage. You just do it yourself. You've had a green card for five years. All right. All right. Uh, I have a question regarding to my friend. My friend, uh, he, he was married. I think same year we both married, but he's married was kind of a little bit uh, caught by the immigration saying, uh, he got married on uh, on business issue, uh, which he was denied, and he later went to court, and he was denied. I think he was placed on a remover. 
And after that, he got into a lot of trouble. He got a two DUI. He has so what's a, so what's, a, what's the question? Broken. He was ordered. He was ordered deported, and he has a lot of criminal records. It doesn't sound like a very promising case for me. Yeah, he has. A, he has. A, he was on deportation because. So, so what, what's the question? The, the man got ordered deported. He's living here with an order of deportation as criminal record. He's got a big problem. Uh, you know, I don't have the I don't have the answer, but he would need a consultation. Oh, all right. Hold on. All right, Bert. Thank all right. you so you're much. welcome. Appreciate you appreciate it. Hold on one second. Yeah. All right. That didn't sound like a very promising case there. Uh, he's ordered deported. He oh, and after he got ordered deported, he kept getting arrested. All right. Let's go, Ravi. Last question, Ravi, in Princeton, New Jersey. Ravi, what's going on? Hi. Good afternoon, Mister. Mr. I just like calling for two question, please. Yes. I, I, I'm a U.S. citizen. I filed for my sister in December 2008, and I received only one letter from uh, immigration that they get through. Great. And from that time, I moved to another apartment, and I didn't change the address, mm -hmm. and I changed my phone. Mm -hmm. Then this year, I call, I call uh, one of my friends, they call immigration, and she changed for me the address and those stuff. And I, we didn't receive any answer yet. Where, where is, where, uh, you have the approval notice, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, and on the approval notice, does it say that your case was transferred to the National Visa Center? Yeah, that's what they say. Okay. And where is your sister or your brother right now? My sister is in uh, Morocco. Where? Morocco. Morocco. And, yes. um... What you need to do is take this approval letter, okay, yes. make a photocopy of it, write okay. a letter to the National Visa Center where they mailed it, and tell them you've moved addresses, you're the petitioner, here's a copy of the receipt notice, you've moved addresses, please update my address, they will start mailing you things to your new address. <laughs> They're right now up to September 22nd, 2006, your 2008, it's about a year and a half away. Yes, but I already called them and I give them already the new address. Great. And and I didn't get any letter that they changed the address. That's why you should write them. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, one more question. Uh, this year I applied for my brother and uh, the lady, she followed up the application for me. Uh, I get the approved letter, but my brother is married, and she, when I get the letter, I get the letter. I like my his wife. She applied for him. Now me, I apply for my sister, for my brother. All right. So hopefully it's just an error on the approval notice. You have to again contact the National Visa Center and make sure they have the proper information. And, and, if, you, and if you need help, if you need help, I can help you with that. But you got to write them and say, "I have this approval letter." Explain exactly what you told me. I have this approval letter. I filed for my brother. The approval notice says it's my sister-in-law's name on it. Please correct that so and so is my brother, and please confirm that with me. And that's it. The problem, the problem, sir. I'm not good uh, in the in so the that, computer. Uh, yeah, it sounds it to me. So, and not not that the, you know, it just sounds like you're not sure what what you should be doing. So if you want, you can hold on, and I'll be happy to help you. Hold on one second. All right. Yo-Yo, Vanessa, what are you guys doing? Here. Oh, thank God. Thank God. I, I keep thinking of that Rio de Janeiro story. I was scared what we were going to be coming back to. <laughs> so you, uh, you got oh, no, no. <laughs> I was scared what we were going to be coming back to. All right. I'm in my mom's house today. <laughs> All right. Uh, by the way, uh, I do have to... I do have to remind everybody before, uh, oh, you know what? Let's do this. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.